Hey folks, uh, this is Vivek. I'm super excited to chat with all of y'all. Uh, we'll give a, a quick talk about uh, what Cohere is all about, and uh, we'll make sure we have enough time to chat about uh, your production challenges with these models or anything else you want to chat about. Um, Cool. Uh, quick intro. Um, so we are a leading uh, data security focused uh, enterprise AI company. Uh, our focus is building trustworthy uh, enterprise AI models uh, with our partners for real world business uh, use cases. Um, and uh, we work with a lot of like strategics uh, across uh, various clouds uh, and are, uh, have a bit of a Switzerland play when it comes to where we can uh, ship and deploy. And I'll talk to that uh, a little later. Um, so we have a crack team of uh, ML uh, researchers and seasoned enterprise uh, operators. Uh, Aiden, uh, who's our co-founder and CEO, was one of the uh, authors on the uh, seminal Transformer paper. Uh, we have uh, Phil, who's our chief scientist. Uh, he was an NLP lead at DeepMind and a professor at Oxford. Uh, Nils, uh, who leads a lot of our retrieval efforts, was uh, built expert. Uh, and then Patrick uh, was uh, the co-author on the RAG paper, which is a big uh, focus for us at uh, Cohere. So uh, fantastic team uh, that's uh, helping us build lots of amazing things. Um, so here's a quick overview of our product line. Um, so we have uh, two main arcs, so the generative side and then the advanced retrieval models. Um, on the generative side, uh, we have uh, two uh, flagship models, which is Command R and R+. R is our uh, workhorse, uh, super low cost model. Uh, that's great, great for most enterprise use cases. Uh, and then we have R+, which is uh, your more powerful, larger model uh, for more complex like reasoning, tool use, RAG uh, use cases. Um, and on the retrieval side, uh, uh, most people have used some form of an embedding model, um, and I'll get into that a little later in the talk. Uh, but uh, the re-ranker is something special uh, that I haven't seen quite often in the market, uh, but we think uh, it adds a lot of value, especially to your uh, RAG pipelines. Um, so we'll get into that too. Um, so when we build at Cohere, uh, so we have uh, five guiding uh, ethos as to how uh, we want to go about things. Um, the first is, uh, obviously, everybody's testing their models and all sorts of academic benchmarks. Uh, but for us, what is really important is the performance on uh, enterprise use cases. Um, so we've worked uh, with a lot of our partners to ensure that we have an eval suite uh, that is highly customized to enterprise uh, use cases across, like, let's say, health, HR, finance. Uh, and that's uh, a bit of our goalpost as we ship uh, e each of these like model versions and uh, we constantly bench mark uh, on how we are performing at each of these industries uh, and use cases that our customers care about. Um, and then when the next thing is if all about efficiency and scalability, right? We're uh, not particularly chasing the race for having the largest model out there, but what we really care about is the practical use of these models, right? How, how do these models get used and how cheap is it uh, uh, and how easy is it for you to run it as a customer? Um, the next big thing is obviously customization. Uh, you know, as, as much as we'd like for all of these models to work out of the box, there's always a, a certain niche that uh, customers want to customize this for. Uh, and we offer a variety of things, uh, some of which are pretty intrusive. Uh, we've helped our customers uh, with taking our base model uh, and retraining that with their enterprise-specific data uh, for domain adaptation. We can do a full retraining of the model for you with your data. Uh, uh, and then obviously the uh, pretty typical last few layers uh, retraining, which is self-serve on our platform. Um, data prominence and privacy is another uh, big focus uh, for us. Uh, we've uh, worked quite a bit to ensure that all of the data that we've uh, collected for building our models uh, is, uh, meets up to the enterprise uh, standards, uh, and we offer indemnification for any IP claims uh, that you might run into as a customer. Uh, and then, obviously, we don't ever use any of your data to train our models, so, um, so that, that's a uh, guarantee from us. Uh, and uh, deployment flexibility. Uh, as I mentioned, we're available on pretty much every major cloud provider. Uh, and then we also allow you to deploy uh, on-prem or in your own VPC um, and wherever uh, your compute and your data is, that's where we'll meet you at. Um, cool. Um, so 
just a quick look at uh, uh, you know your typical performance metrics. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, something that enterprises like repeatedly tell us is uh, they care about like multilingual, they care about like RAG um, and tool use for upcoming like agentic use cases. Uh, so a, a lot of our focus has been uh, in these areas. Uh, these are some benchmarks from Hotpot QA, Bamboogle, uh, Berkeley function calling uh, that our models uh, are quite uh, good at. Uh, and um, and another example of like how we try to innovate is uh, we try to make sure that as we are building uh, w these stacks, we're incorporating all of the features that people care about out of the box and they don't have to do extra work. Citations on drag is a great example of this. Uh, for most people, you have to do a lot of work to actually build this functionality with like other APIs, uh, but this really comes out of the box with like Cohere's uh, models and APIs. You don't have to do anything additional as a developer uh, to build, uh, get citations, and which is uh, very important for any RAG-based like application. Um, uh, on the multilingual front, uh, we have one of the best performance when it comes to uh, the Flores multilingual uh, evaluation. Uh, and we also have a bit of a secret sauce with our uh, tokenizer, uh, which uh, helps keep costs really low, right? Uh, and uh, that's, again, uh, TCO is, again, a very big thing for enterprises. Uh, and uh, it allows our customers to take that same model, de deploy across the globe on, uh, with their customers, uh, which is very important. Um, switching gears towards the embeddings models, uh, again, uh, given uh, Nielsen and his team uh, have been innovators in the space for a while now, uh, and uh, we've uh, done quite a bit of work to make, our, make sure our performance is great on like noisy data and at a super low cost uh, uh, in this particular space. Um, so we're, we're actually pretty excited about what our embeddings models uh, can do, and this is all, almost always like one of the top things that uh, our customers are uh, excited about. Um, but embeddings uh, is a pretty complex space and not without its uh, challenge. Uh, so we, we try to build this like fun demo where we took all of the archive papers uh, and we asked it a question, uh, when was the attention paper um, built by, uh, paper published by Aidan uh, Gomez, who's our founder, and we tried this across like a bunch of like embeddings model. So some common patterns that we see is um, archive is a great example of like where you have different kinds of like data, right? You have like the title, when was the paper published, the dates, uh, you have the various authors, you have like the actual paper itself. And in many ways, this represents the kind of data you might see in enterprises, right? Um, so when you uh, actually build the embeddings for this, um, you get a fairly complex like vector space uh, and your search queries might not actually like map neatly to this, right? Uh, and this is sort of like where our re-ranker comes in. Uh, so what our re-ranker does is once you have uh, all of these uh, retrieved documents, uh, it help, it's a cross encoder that helps you uh, re-rank the uh, retrieved set and make sure that that's the one that you send into your context with the generative model. Um, and uh, here's the re-ranker in uh, action. Um, so what this demo is showing you is uh, we search uh, for the Transformer paper by Aiden. So you have three different types of like search patterns over here, a lexical search, then an embeddings-based search, uh, and uh, the Cohere re-rank-based search, right? Uh, and the uh, various forms of these like retrievals obviously give you the responses, but they are stacked rank at different places in the retrieval set, which means the overall accuracy of your RAG system might be low. Uh, and re-rank is what's helping you to make sure uh, that isn't the case. Uh, this builds on top of like other things that people care about, like chunking strategies, uh, but making those more optimal. Uh, another impact of this re-ranker is, again, total cost of operation, because most of the expense for your models is coming in from the input tokens, right? Uh, and if you were able to like, narrow in uh, to the right uh, uh, context and do that quickly, uh, you could pass in very minimal amount of context to your large language model, which drives, on, drives down your overall cost of like, operation. Uh, and that uh, is, again, very important in the enterprise uh, setting. Um, yeah, and when it comes to deployment options, like I said, we have a SaaS API uh, that we can help uh, you manage run your wo uh, workloads, uh, but then we're also on all of the major cloud AI services, Sage, SageMaker, Bedrock, uh, OCI, 
uh, and a private deployment across all of these cloud providers and um, also on-premise deployments if, if that's uh, something you care about. Um, security and privacy obviously is a pretty uh, top of mind for us, so we make sure we're compliant with uh, uh, the standards that our customers are often asking us uh, for. Um, and then the last bit is just enabling like developers. Um, so we uh, obviously have a, a pretty tight integration with things like La Langchain, Llama Index, uh, but we also have an open source like toolkit uh, that comes out of the box uh, with uh, various forms of like connectors um, and that lets you uh, ingest uh, data pretty easily into your systems and lets you have full control over the things you're uh, building um, and don't have to really uh, look uh, for a ton of different like options uh, as you're developing your uh, enterprise applications. So uh, that's it from me, and I'd love to take any questions or chat. And we also have Sandra here uh, from Cohere, so she'll she'll be happy to help. Thank thank you very much. Yeah, M maybe two questions. So on the first or second slide, you show your uh, investors and the selected partners. Right? Yeah. I saw Accenture, I saw McKinsey. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit? Like how that partnership uh, work, right? Yeah. And, that's, and then the second question, like you can skip if someone else like yeah. has another one, is can, can you like maybe without disclosing uh, customers and all, give us a, a, like a few samples of where you clients picked up Cohere versus other solutions and and kind of why? So explain where you win right on the on the enterprise world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, happy to chat about that. Um, so. Uh, I think the typical challenge with all of these enter um, enterprise like generative AI models is the last mile challenge, right? Like uh, there's uh, so many different like arcs of like customization that's needed uh, with the enterprises. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of like traditional uh, like players who've been around for a while and have great relationships with the enterprises, uh, have a deep understanding of like the various like uh, business domains. Uh, that's where uh, the McKinsey and Accenture and all of these companies come in. Um, so they've been uh, really uh, helpful for us to co-develop like the product, like make sure that we're able to effectively uh, bridge that like last mile gap with them. Um, and yeah, that hopefully that that helps. Uh, and then onto your second question, I would say um, uh, in terms of like winnability, I think like the main uh, aspects that has been uh, resonating a lot with our customers is this control over the data and control over the compute, right? Uh, given we're available pretty much everywhere, uh, a lot of like the customers care about that private cloud deployment, the ability to fine tune in that uh, private cloud environment, uh, which is pretty big uh, for a lot of people and making sure that their enterprise data does not leave their own ecosystem. Um, and a specific examples for that have been uh, companies in, uh, let's say, HR or healthcare or even uh, folks who are trying to take their in-house like code and uh, build a custom model that's uh, working with uh, their code base. Uh, those are the styles of applications uh, that uh, we've seen a lot of like uh, impact and success with. So I'm curious, um, uh, for tax classification, well, what is the kind of latest uh, best practice? I see on your website you have a classify endpoint attribute classifier. Uh, is that still the recommendation? Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I, I, the, the way I like to think about uh, these things is there's always the arc of like, uh, um, and I think like Jerry in his earlier talk did this, right, which was, what phase of like development you're in, uh, if you're trying to like prototype or you're trying to productionize, and what's your scale of like a production setting, uh, which is important to consider for these things. Uh, for uh, if you're just trying to like get off the ground like quickly, I would say just using the generative model off the shelf is obviously always great. It, it gets you off the ground really quickly. Uh, when you're trying to like productionize something, that's when I would start thinking, hey, do I need a bespoke model? Uh, or like the, the general model is good enough and what are sort of like the cost of operation like differences and like the cost of like maintenance differences and also the scale, right? Like, I mean, if, if you're going to try to do something that's, uh, you know, tens of thousands like TPS, uh, then having a, a purpose-built like model for that is the route I'd go uh, versus, you know, uh, a more heavy general model uh, which might serve other, other needs. Um, so yeah, both of those are good options depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Just a quick, yeah. uh, quick yeah. follow up. Yeah. 
if we actually train a classifier with you, is that also a transformer model, just more specialized? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. got it. Thank you. No, I think we're done. Oh, no, we've got one, one question. Here we go. Just a quick question. When we were looking at Cohere, you know, probably early last or middle of last year, mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges that with the models that we found were the input context size limit yeah. were quite small. H how has that evolved as you guys have sort of created the next, you know, sets of models? On yeah, your that's a great question. So our latest generation models are uh, fairly competitive, 128K uh, context input uh, windows, uh, and we're constantly looking to uh, figure out how to like opt them. Um, so context window, I would say, should be not a problem for like most applications uh, at the moment. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're actually slightly early, but yeah, I'd like to thank you for giving the talk. Thank yeah, you for that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.